I come from British Columbia, west coast of Canada, and I was born in Souk, which is a village on Vancouver Island, which is off the west coast. In 1937, my family moved to England. We were living in London, and, uh, but I went to a, a boarding school in Wiltshire, it was a tank training place, so I got to know, got to be quite enthusiastic about tanks. And I said, if this war goes on, if I have to join up, I'll be in a tank. I, I became 18, so they, I was, at, so I was actually a university student at the time, and I wanted to join the Armored Corps. And so I went to the Canadian military headquarters in Trafalgar Square and uh, I said, I, I, I want to join the army. And the fellow said, why do you want to join the army? <laughs> I thought, oh, I, got, I was thinking what the right answer to that question was. And he then said to me, are you prepared to die for your king and country? And I said, yes, sir. <laughs> he said, you're enrolled. <laughs> anyway, I, I had a pretty good training because I had previously been in the, in the uh, as an air cadet. And also in the, when I was in London in the, in the Home Guard, so I, I pretty well knew basic training. And I joined the Canadian Armoured Corps, and um, they then, I was uh, directed to the Sherbrooke Fusiliers. In about March of 1944, I was 19, just, just turned 19 then, and um, so March, April, May, June, we were ready to go for the invasion. So happened to land it on D-Day. We went on board the, the tank landing craft. Um, it must have been three or four days before. It, it wasn't very comfortable because they were just bare boxes with steel floors and we couldn't sleep in our tanks so we slept on the on the metal and then uh, of course there was a delay in the thing the crossing was terrible we it was over we left about six o'clock in the evening i was seasick and um i thought it you know when you're I've, I don't know if you've been seasick, but um, <laughs> you're quite prepared to die. <laughs> so I thought it couldn't be worse than this. <laughs> we had been shown a photograph of the beach, and they said, the, the, there's, a, there's a big, there's a house in this photograph, three-story house, and you're to, la you're to leave the beach with that house on your right hand side because that's where the Royal Engineers will have built a, a ramp. Uh, and that house is now uh, Maison de Canadien, <laughs> which is, is quite something. I, I, I didn't realize that until I came to, to the 70th anniversary celebration. And I said, this is where we landed, you know. <laughs> yes. Anyway, the, the, that was the, and our objective was to, 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 to capture Khan in 24 hours. So it was to be a walkover. Uh, objective was to reconnaissance a, what they call a harbor for the regiment and preferably at Carpiquet Airport. And however, if, if you get to the airport, 
and it looks like there's problems, you let us know and we'll have to find another place. And uh, so, but I said, we've lost radio communication. Well, he said, there's not much point going on any further. <laughs> we'll go home. And we turned around and, and we came back to the beach or to, we joined up again with the regiment. Uh, I came, they sent me back from Normandy to England uh, at the end of August. So I was there for the taking of Khan, and we were just preparing to take Falaise when I was sent back. And uh, I, they sent me back, I, and I got a commission then and became an officer and joined the, and I was then sent back to Holland to the Winnipeg Rifles. Okay. And uh, I, I was with them until VE Day, where we wound up in northern Germany on, in v, uh, at the end of the war. I, the first time I came back to Normandy, I, I was with my wife and we had, we were on holiday and we were, we had, we had a, a car and we were driving through the country and I said, well, we, we sh I, I said, let's go to Bernier Sumer and I'll show you where we landed on D-Day and it was, a, well, it was the summer and it was a, holiday and people on the beach and uh, and it was just like it is now but D-Day I don't think was as big a thing at, in those days that I came back for the, fifth, the 70th anniversary that was totally different I mean the most impressive thing I got was the fact that um, we had sort of forgotten about D-Day and the invasion, but the local people, uh, you know, they never forgot. And they, <laughs> to them, it was the end of four years of, of uh, horror. And I realized that, you know, to them, it was a total different experience to what it was to us. To us, it was just something we'd done overseas and we were on. I, I didn't realize in, until 70 years after how, how, uh, how big a thing it was to the local people.